it's Mike coming at you with another Planet Zoo console edition video. Welcome back to Eden Garden Zoological Park. Now, we have some things to talk about. I am one of the biggest advocates for this game. I am in love with this game. I cannot get enough of it. But with that being said, I'm not going to be blinded to the issues that this game has. Already from these opening shots, you may notice some changes. Everything that I had made for episode 3, I lost. The entire lot. For no reason whatsoever. But the strangest thing was my conservation points had saved and all the research that I had done had saved. That was all still the same, but all of the building that I had done had all gone. Everything. So from the end of episode two, all the way through episode three, everything that I built there, an entire day's work, gone. Just like that. Click of the fingers. And I was not a happy bunny at all. I was raging. So I've had to come back and I've had to redo everything. And in trying to redo everything, the amount of bugs and crashes I had in franchise mode, I was unable to play for an hour without about 10 times of being disconnected from the franchise mode. So I've made a decision. We have swapped this park to a sandbox park. It is no longer franchise mode, it's now sandbox. But I've kept a lot of the same rules in place. We will still have money, we will still have conservation points, everything will remain the same. The only thing that has changed so far is all the staff are now fully trained, which I'm not going to argue with. I couldn't really do anything about that unless I fired them and got new staff, but I got attached to them. I loved Jonathan and what was her name? Bertha. I couldn't get rid of them. I couldn't bring myself to do it. So this is now sandbox mode. But with that being said, I have redone everything from the last episode. I tried to recreate it as best as I could, and I think I did quite a good job. We also got rid of the flamingos. I had a couple of comments saying it wasn't really the right type of enclosure for flamingos, and I was in agreement. Even my own wife said it doesn't really look very flamingo-y. Is that a word? I don't know. She made it up. Just go with it. I was just using that cinematic camera mode there. What did you all think? How cool is that? But the flamingos have gone. Bye-bye, flamingos. And in their place, we've now got these saltwater crocodiles. And they love it. They don't like the plants very much like the flamingos, but it really does suit a crocodile enclosure so we'll go and have a look at them just in a moment but i just want to show some of the changes that i made when redoing this i redid all of this side here i think it's a lot nicer than what i did and the crocodiles didn't need a hard shelter so i built a waterfall in the corner instead i've redone this bridge oh look we've got the baby crocodile coming under oh my god he's so cute we'll go and have a look at him in a minute but we'll come over this bridge that I've redesigned. Oh, we've got Mummy Crocodile here. I think that's Mummy Crocodile. Yeah, I'm Jay Jaya Chandra. I think that's how you say your name. And with the exception of the plant coverage, they're extremely happy. They're more than content in here, a lot more so than what the flamingos were. So we can go with that. I'm not sure why that traversable land isn't quite right. Ah, okay. We might have to have a quick look at that. There's not quite enough traversable land for them. So I'll have a quick look at that. It might even be that tree stump that's right there. I might look at removing that. And where is Daddy Croc? Is in here somewhere. There he is. Look at the size of this boy. Look at him. Cal Caliono? Something along them lines. Look at the detail that is on him that's incredible that's absolutely insane but with this now being a sandbox series i'm not reliant upon the frontier servers like i was for the franchise mode the franchise mode you can only have one save it, one save in what world do you only have one save that's crazy if something goes wrong with that save like i had you lose everything 
Whereas at least in sandbox mode, you can have multiple backup saves, which is what I've done. So we're four episodes in. We've already had two big problems, but hopefully that's it. They're all out of the way. We can just go smooth sailing from now on. I'm trying to find the babies. Where are they? I know I've got two babies in here somewhere. Where are they? So we've got Raheel and Dine. So where are they? Oh, he's under the bridge, look. Oh, he's so cute. I love him. But not as much as I love the wolf pup. Let's get that out of the way straight away. Nothing is as cute as that one. Where is Raheel then? I didn't see him as I was going around. Raheel, where are you? Oh, there he is. Found you. I must have gone past him multiple times. Oh, he's asleep. With his leg in the air. My dog does that. When he goes to sleep, he sticks his leg in the air like that. Look at the detail on them. That is absolutely incredible. Wow. Right, anyway. So, we had something very strange happen with the wolves. I had a wolf pup in my storeroom. I have no idea where it came from. It's not related at all to any of the wolves I currently have. And you can't buy wolf pups that I'm aware of. You can't buy them as babies. So it just miraculously appeared from somewhere. I have absolutely no idea. But we've got Caprice. So welcome to the zoo, Caprice. So we've now got the four wolves. And we do need to look at expanding this wolf enclosure today. So that will be the main priority. But I just want to put a little bit more detail around here. With this being a staff path, we need to look at blocking this off to the guests. So using some of these mesh gates, I'll put some of these down. We'll put some wooden brackets on either side. We'll put some don't pass signs there also. And then we'll do the same just going up to the staff facilities, putting some there as well. And then we'll go and expand that wolf enclosure and i think today we're going to make a start on a otter enclosure which i'm really excited for the otters in this game they are so so cute and i'm not gonna lie as soon as they have babies they may overtake the wolf pup we're gonna have to see but let's get this done shall we With the gates now done on that side, it's just a question of selecting it all, copying it and pasting it over to this side. We just need to adjust them to fit this staff path now. With the gates now in place, I'm going to use this same wooden beam to create a custom fence blocking the sightline to that backstage staff area. I'm really looking forward to come to the staff area because I've got some big plans of how to make this a really dynamic backstage area. There's nothing better in video games than having to redo the same thing that you've already done before. How much fun is this? I'd already done this once, but I lost it, it went, so here I am having to redo it once more. Whoops, I put a little bit in the wolf enclosure. Nobody saw that, ignore that. I'll delete it in a second. But we're just gonna put all of them on a grid in there, and then we've got all the covering. Oh, it's snowing again in May. Okay. Um, it's not seasonal weather, okay? Just roll with it. It's it's now June. It's snowing in June. And I wanted to do this. Well, now we're just going to have to sit here and wait, aren't we? Because I really want to get this done. So let's just have a quick look on everything. Oh, we've got some people in the park. We've got NH99. Hello, NH99. Oh, it's shorts and t-shirt in snow. I bet you're regretting that choice right now. Who else have we got in the park? We've got Iron Possible. Oh, nice hat extremely stylish and who else have we got we had one more we've also got levi hartley also looking very stylish with your green hat right let's have a quick look on that so that's just telling us stuff we already knew telling us that we need more 
staff facilities. Let's have a quick check on all of the animals, see how they're all doing. Yes, I know you need more room. I'm getting there. I was doing it, but it started snowing and I can't see what I'm doing. So I'll do that in a moment. How are you guys doing? Let's have a look at you. Yep, not bad at all. Quite happy. 80% welfare. They're doing all right. It's just that plant coverage. And they're the right temperature because I've already got heaters in here. I've also now got a water regulator for this enclosure and a water cleaner, which was pointed out to me in the last episode. So thank you ever so much for that comment because I had forgot, but they are now both there. We need this snow to go, don't we? We might just have to speed up some time, I think, just to get this done. So let's do that. One of my favourite tools to use in the game is the roughing feature. Turning the intensity down to 10% and then increasing the size just allows you to create these really dynamic enclosures with lots of different elevation changes. Now it's just a question of putting down loads of rocks, trees, foliage, plants, and anything else you can think of to bring your enclosures to life. After around 20 minutes of putting down loads more foliage, we're almost done. And if I'm being completely honest, I didn't really like this enclosure as I was doing it. I didn't think it was good enough. As I was going around, I was like, this doesn't look very good. But when I got to the end and looked at the end result and how it all came together, I actually really like it. And I think that's a good example of just persevering. If you don't like what it is that you're doing, sometimes just persevere with it and wait for the end result because you might end up with something magnificent. I'm not saying this is magnificent, it's okay. It's passable, it's all right. I'm not that big headed, okay? <laughs> you let me know if you think it's magnificent. I'll just give it a thumbs up, well done. It was okay. Right, anyway, let's put some of these education boards over here. This rotation can get a little bit irritating at times. I'm still trying to work it out how to get it always right. Sometimes it seems to go perfect, other times it doesn't. Well, there you go. We'll turn that around and we'll place that there. And we'll place another one just over here. And I don't think the power reaches over here, does it? No, it doesn't. Not quite. But that's not a problem because we're about to start building over there in a moment anyway. And we're going to need some more power going over there. Which reminds me, I said I was going to get another mechanic to start researching electric. I haven't done that yet, so I will get on that. But we'll get another speaker, so we'll copy that bring that over here and i think we'll put that just on top of that there. there we go and we can expand that because it's not conflicting with anything else so can we put that up to the full 20 we can indeed lovely right and we need to get this path done as well don't we and get all this connected so yeah that's not looking too bad at all is it i think that's okay so let's get this path done so with the pathing now done, we can start heading down towards where we're going to put the otter enclosure. We'll have a quick look inside there, just on the way past. The guests are coming down already. We're going to have way more guests using this path in the not too distant future when we put this enclosure down here. And with this otter enclosure, I think I might start playing around with some of the terrain options, which I haven't really done too much in this game so far. So what we're going to do right at the beginning here is I'm going to put the water just down there. So we'll drop that down a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to kind of step it up going back with the hard shelter and the entrance for the keeper right at the back. So let's see how this goes, shall we?
With the outline now done, it's now time to bring the path down, working its way around the water. What I'd also like to do is create a custom barrier so the guests can just look over and see the otters swimming in the water. I think I may have already found one of my favourite pieces in Planet Zoo. This really small brace plate is going to be so versatile and I'm going to be able to use it for so many different things. With the first piece now done, it's just a question of copying it all the way around the water. We will of course come back and adjust this pathing at a later date, just to straighten all of this up, so ignore that for now. At the edges of the guest viewing area, I'm going to fill this out all with rocks coming around the side here and use this as part of the barrier. With all of the border now done, it's now time to start working on the hard shelter and where the keeper will be coming through. Using this piece here and just dropping it below the ground, we can use that as a little door for the otters to walk through. With the building foundation now in place, it's now time to use this brace plate again to use as a trim going around the doors, around the side of the building. I'm not 100% sure what I think of this building at the moment, but for now I'm going to persevere with it. It needs a little bit of adjusting because it looks a little bit plain and bland at the moment, but we can always adjust that and add more details at a later time. So just using some rocks to just fill in these gaps around the outside and then the enclosure is almost finished and ready for decorating. For building, we are done for the day. We'll return back to this in the next episode and decorate this all up. But it's time to put the otters in. Oh my days, I'm excited for this. Look how cute they are. Oh, they are adorable. I love them. Move over, wolf pup. I've got a new favourite one. Oh, they're not very happy, are they? Oh dear. Oh, that hard shelter is... The hard shelter zero because it hasn't got a roof on. That's why. I'm like, oh no, they haven't got a hard shelter. I haven't put a roof over the building. That would be it. But it may not be enough anyway. We may have to expand that building. Look at him swimming. Oh, this is amazing. I cannot wait to decorate this one in the next episode. Let's just have a very quick look to see if they can escape. Let's make sure we've got all of the enclosure right. That was the wrong button, Matty. There we go. Right, can they escape anywhere? No. Oh, hang on. Yes, they can. Right, we've got a couple of problem areas here, haven't we? So they can climb up the rocks there, and they can also climb up the rocks in the other corner also. So we're going to have to put some more rocks here. Maybe just some higher ones, just so they can't jump out. So we'll use the Tega rocks again. I imagine they'll be able to jump up onto that, won't they? They're quite good jumpers. They'll just climb straight up that one as well. What about this one? Hang on. Yeah, stay away. Get back. That's it. You get in a box. You're not coming this way. You're not escaping. Not on my watch. Right, we'll put another one there. And we may as well just bring this back a little bit there to line it up with the path. Right, can you 
escape from there now. Let's have a look. Oh, you can still climb up. Right. So you can climb up that one little bit there, look. Right. Okay. So if we put something there in front of that. Right. Now you mustn't be able to jump up. That must be it. You can still jump up. Right. Okay. Right. Game on. You are not escaping from this enclosure. Right. What else can we put down? I'm going to put a wall there. <laughs> Just build a giant wall. Escape from that. Right. I think I'll use some of these. Oh, what we could do, actually, is if we have a couple of these going over here, and we could put a little waterfall coming up. Uh, like, up. Well, not up it, because water doesn't flow up, Matty. A waterfall coming down from it, not up from it, okay? And then we could put some more rocks around here, have the water coming down. Yeah, I think that would look really good. So we might do that in the next episode also. But for now, we just need to ensure that they can't escape. So I think this will also double up as a hard shelter as well. So let's have a look at that. Let's select that one over there. And can you escape from that? No, you can't. Awesome. Right, so you can still escape from over in this corner. So we're going to have to put a couple more rocks down here as well. That one's way too small. We need one of the bigger ones. That one's... Mm, yeah, that one actually works okay. Because we can move that back to the staff path over there. And I think we'll use one of these as well. Put one of them on top. And then you shouldn't be able to escape from there. We've got loads of guests coming down. So we're going to have to put education boards down. And all of the uh, donation bins and everything. So we'll do that in the next episode. We'll come back. We'll start decorating all of this. Get them all happy and everything. But yeah, a good start. I'm happy with this so far. I think it's definitely got potential once we've themed it all up. So I'm really excited to do that. Come on, Jonathan. Start researching the otters for me we'll get their enrichment items on the go but let me know what you all think down below hopefully you've enjoyed this episode i'm going to be back tomorrow with another episode until then take care stay safe look after yourselves and see you all tomorrow bye everybody